page 451. Please stand and sing with us. the Lord with our souls. He has done great things for us and he continues doing so. We thank him for so many blessings. We praise him and we worship him. And this morning I wish to welcome all the visitors who are with us. Thank you for choosing our parish family. Our parish is a wonderful parish family. Very loving, very warm as you can feel uh, the singing itself can tell. And for those who are looking for a home, welcome home. The Lord is saying, stop searching. This is the best home in the deanery. The mass intention is for Dr. Donald Gelly, requested by Rita Gelly. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. As we begin the 32nd week in ordinary time, the word of God is reminding us of how to live our faith in this challenging world, how to sustain our Christian way of life, and to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries let us acknowledge our sins and ask for God's mercy and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, a virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May the Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, oh God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most Christ, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, graciously keep from us all adversity, so that unhindered in mind and body alike, we may pursue in freedom of heart the things that are yours. Grant this prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns within the unit of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. Resplendent and unfading is wisdom, and she is readily perceived by those who love her and found by those who seek her. She hastens to make herself known in anticipation of their desire. Whoever watches for her at dawn shall not be disappointed, for he shall find her sitting by his gate. For taking thought of wisdom is the perfection of prudence, and whoever for her sake keeps vigil shall quickly be free from care. Because she makes her own rounds, seeking those worthy of her, and graciously appears to them in the ways, and meets them with all solicitude. The word of the Lord. Upon my couch, 
And through the night watches I meditate on you You are my help And in the shadow of your wings I shout for joy My soul is thirsting for you Oh Lord my God My soul is thirsting for you Oh Lord my God A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. We do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, about those who have fallen asleep, so that you may not grieve like the rest who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose, so too will God, through Jesus, bring with him those who have fallen asleep. Indeed, we tell you this on the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will surely not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself, with the word of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, will come down from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, console one another with these words. The word of the Lord. Jesus told his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones, when taking their lamp, lamps brought no oil with them, but the wise brought flask of oil with their lamps. Since the bridegroom was long delayed, they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, there was a cry, Behold, the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those virgins got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise ones replied, No, for there may not be enough for us and you. Go instead to the merchants and buy some for yourselves. While they went off to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went into the wedding feast with him. Then the door was locked. Afterwards, the other virgins came and said, 
Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But he said in reply, Amen, I say to you, I do not know you. Therefore, stay awake, for you know neither the day nor the hour. My sisters and brothers in Christ, the gospel of the Lord. First, I wish to let you know that after the, the profession of faith, we are going to have uh, a presentation of the annual report from our school by the principal, and then we'll continue with the prayers of the faithful. As we begin the 32nd week in ordinary time, like I said, my introductory remarks, it's a time that maybe we need to reflect how we keep our faith going in this challenging world, how we sustain our Christian way of life. I think there's no one among us here this morning uh, who likes to be called a fool or maybe a foolish person. Nobody wants to hear that. But sometimes we refer to ourselves when you do something, you say, I just acted or behaved like a fool. But if somebody says that to you, you, you feel you may be even upset. But I think maybe sometimes to, we need to reflect on those uh, two ways that we have heard in the gospel this morning, uh, foolish and wise. And that is what distinguishes people who believe in God and those maybe who do not. Those ways of being wise and uh, being foolish. Every day of our lives is a day of calling from God, and it's a day of responding to God's call. Just like this morning, we woke up, and I'm sure some, as always or usual, we struggled. Can I just go at 10 o'clock or noon? I want to sleep on, you know, and it feels good. Even a priest sometimes struggles. I wish there was my parochial vicar would just say, can you go, you know? <laughs> but we are here. We have responded to God's call. And each day of our lives, that is what it is. As soon as you wake up, God is calling you for a purpose because our life here on earth is for a purpose of saving God, of helping him to build his kingdom here on earth. The first call that each one of us received was a call to become a Christian through the sacrament of baptism. And on that day, a candle was presented to all of us, even though we, most of us were babies that time, but our parents and godparents received that light for us. And those words were used by a priest, keep this light burning until the day we meet the Lord. And on that day, we received three wonderful gifts of being priests, of being prophets, and of being children of God. So that is the first and most important call is to become a Christian. And all other calls they follow later, to be a priest, to be a deacon, to be religious, or to be part of the sacrament of matrimony, all those calls come after we have been responded to be a Christian. And that's why we look at this parable. It's helping us how to continue sustaining our Christian way of life, how to keep our faith burning in this world, we are living in a very challenging world. Sometimes this world can move us into a wrong direction. We are all called like those ten virgins we have heard in the gospel. We are all those ten virgins, even this morning. But each one of us has to know what kind of a virgin am I today? And the only person who can answer that question is me, is you as an individual. 
Am I a wise virgin? Am I a foolish virgin? All these virgins were ready. They were prepared. They came for a wedding feast. But something made a difference between the two groups. They all had the lamp which was burning and giving light. But the other group forgot what matters most, the source of keeping the lamp burning and giving light. That was the oil. The other group, they brought the source of keeping the lamp burning. And that's very important in our lives. Yes, we can continue responding to God's call, but are we, do we ha are we connected with the source of life? Because that's what matters. And the source of life is our faith rooted in our Lord Jesus Christ. We have to be always to keep that faith uh, burning. You know, sometimes I know most of the Christians, they are not afraid to die. But there comes a time when most of the people, maybe they are in the deathbed, and sometimes they hold on to life. And maybe sometimes people are saying, I don't know why he or she is struggling to let go. Sometimes that something comes to the mind of these people. They feel there's something that has disconnected them from God, and that bothers them to let go of life. Maybe they remember, I did not forgive my brother, my sister, my mom, or my friend. I, forgot, I did not reach out for reconciliation. I did not love that person. And then they start struggling. Where am I going with that? So that's the meaning of this parable. It's not about sharing or be charitable. It's about how ready are you each day of your life? Every day is a moment, is a very precious moment. We cannot postpone to reconcile, to forgive, to love, because as we have heard in the parable, the time was with the bridegroom. The rest were just waiting. And our time is in our bridegroom, our God. So every time is very important. I'm here, the next time I'm not there. And that's why Christ is saying, stay awake. You know neither the time, no, at the hour, nor the day. And that's the way we have to live our lives every day to be ready. If we fail drowse and asleep, we are ready to move on into eternity. And that is our mission today on earth. Is there something that you feel has disconnected you from the source of life? You have to let go and to begin so that that light does not go out. That light must continue to shine. That's the parable of these virgins. We are all the same. We are being called. But something must be very important in our lives. Be connected to the source of life. And most of the time we are disconnected because of our relationships with one another. When our relationships are disconnected, we too are disconnected from the source of life. So we have to look into our lives today and the whole of this week. Reflect on your own. Because like I said, it's just me who knows where I'm foolish, where I'm wise. It's only you who knows where you are foolish or where you are wise. And because of that, you are able to change, to transform your life. And how do we do this? We search for wisdom. The word of God is wisdom for us. And he's saying it's resplendent, it does not fade. And that's very true. The word of God keeps us going. If we respond faithfully, if we keep this word the wisdom of God, the light will continue shining. The lamp will burn forever. That is the way we look at ourselves. We don't think about another person. I wish he was here to hear. I wish he was here. All of us, it's just me and God. Am I ready today? And that's why St. Paul talked about 
those who have gone, is reminding us there is life after this life. But we have to prepare for that life. We have to be ready. But our relationship here on earth is very important. We should not live our life for fear of hell, no. We have to live our life for the love of God and the love of one another. That's what God wants. So let's be those wise virgins and be able to light our lamp to shine wherever we are. And we have to stand up for others so that we bring light to where light is needed. There's so much darkness going on in our world, in our country, in our communities. But you and I have to keep that lamp burning. Just like we have sung, let's be thirsty for God all the time. And then Christ is saying to us today, stay awake, for you do not know neither the hour nor the day. Let us now profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and he became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom we have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceed from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. May we please be seated. Good morning, everyone. My name is Chris Michael, and I'm blessed to be the principal here in my fifth month at St. Anthony of Padua Catholic School. And today, as Father said, I'd just like to share with you a brief overview of our financial report for the fiscal year ending this past June 30th. As you may or may not be aware, St. Anthony of Padua Catholic School was founded over 70 years ago to provide an exceptional educational offering for the African-American students of West Greenville and beyond. While the makeup of our student body has grown a bit more diverse over the past few years, we still remain committed to providing a Catholic education for any and all families who seek such for their children. I think I would be remiss and I did not say that um, I think the school is probably the largest mission of this parish. Um, that's what I've learned over the past five months and it has become very apparent when you see it on paper. So I just wanna share some of those numbers with you. Um, First of all, some statistics. At this time, we are at 150 students between three-year-olds and fifth graders. 80% uh, of those students are African-American, 9% Hispanic, 9% white, and 2% other. Our current religious affiliations, we are about one quarter Catholic and the rest other denominations. 
All of our students do receive free reduced, I'm sorry, free lunch, free breakfast, and free uh, after school snack if they're on our late stay program. And 100% of our students receive some kind of tuition assistance. Our current teacher to student ratio is about one to 12. The report, which is linked in the bulletin on the school page, um, was posted last week, and hopefully you had a chance to take a look at that. I just wanna go through the report side as far as our financials, and also call your attention to the last page, which has our school improvement plan, which has been constructed um, with the help of our school advisory committee and uh, members of our faculty and staff. And that's an ever-changing document. Um, so things will update throughout the coming years. We're on a five-year plan and we're in year three right now, I believe. Um, so we are going through and just making sure those goals are still relevant. Um, so again, we'll be communicating those as well. So now down to the financials. It was budgeted at the beginning of, or going into last school year, that it would cost $2,031,641 dollars $2 to run our school for the past year. Um, obviously, that is a large number, and generally, when you look at a public, um, a private, or a parochial school, most of the income is provided by tuition. Not so in our case. Most of our support and our revenue comes through donations, through grants, through uh, events like our gala, and through our investments. Um, one number to call your uh, attention to, the cost to educate with assistance, which is the third line in the um, revenue side, and you can look at this when you go home, $1,207,000. Um, that is the cost that we put forth to um, allow students to enroll where we did not have funding such as a grant or a sponsorship through scholarships to offset those costs. So that means our fundraising and our development efforts come into a huge play there. And I am proud to say, even though I had nothing to do with any of this, um, that that $1,207,000 um, which we uh, gave away as unfunded tuition assistance was offset by $1,289,000 in our annual fund, in our endowment gifts, donations, and so forth. So you guys hit it out of the park as well as all of our other um, supporters. So let's give yourselves a round of applause for that. Um, jumping down to our expense side, obviously personnel is a huge expense for us. Um, just so you know, our teachers, um, if, say if our fourth grade teacher left, she could go to a school in Greenville County and um, she would make about 26% more than she is making right now. So something to keep in mind uh, while our teachers, I think, um, realize that they have a good position, there are not as many requirements. Um, uh, on them as, as far as state and federal requirements and uh, district requirements and so forth, um, I, you know, they could go somewhere else and make quite a bit more, and I think we need to be mindful of that um, as we offer just wages. So that's something that we're going to talk about in just a second. So um, uh, really, that's, that's the overall um, financial side of things, but I do want to call your attention to our endowment fund. Um, there are balances listed on the bottom of this third page of our report. Um, since I've been here, the endowment has come up a number of times, so I want to address that. The current um, balance of our endowment is right at, th and this is as of June 30th, $3 million, $3 million $22. So I want you to be aware that that money is in the uh, Catholic Community Foundation, uh, which is uh, held at the diocese and invested by the diocese. Um, but that money has not been touched by the school other than what is earned on interest and investment uh, uh, gains. So that is still well. We're going to do something, some things over the coming uh, year to advertise that more so people know that the endowment is an option for planned giving, um, for estates planning and all those kinds of things. Um, so a little bit about where we're going from here. Uh, we need to look at a more sustainable tuition model, and I know that it is a mission of this parish to support those students who are going to the school.
However, um, looking long term, I don't know how sustainable this model is because um, I did a little poll, and I'm going to do that in just a second here. Last night at Mass, I think um, we actually had more Catholic school uh, products, um, whether it was elementary, secondary, or uh, a college experience in the congregation last night than we did public school products. Uh, so let's do a quick uh, little poll here. Raise your hand if you were touched in any way by a Catholic school experience in your schooling. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I've never been in a parish like this, folks. Um, usually it's public school, and there, there are some Catholic school um, folks here, but um, I, I think that says a lot to why there is such support for our school. Um, and uh, I... I'm blessed to be a part of that. So, um, so we need to look at a more sustainable model for our tuition um, to offset some of this $1.2 million. My fear is um, that the um, grants and those kinds of things that we're tapping into right now will go away and then that puts the burden on the community here. So we want to we want to make sure that we are doing what we can to be uh, sustainable and uh, making good choices. Um, again, the, the piece about being competitive as far as our um, employment and our salaries. And one concern at the end of this year is we have a, uh, received EANS money, which is emergency assistance for non-public schools. That money goes away as far as um, its funding uh, cycle in um, September of next year. That has covered for three years all of our cleaning supplies, all of our technology, um, key funding uh, for positions such as guidance counselor, nurse, and four instructional uh, assistants, and resources for students, textbooks, consumables, and everything. So all of that's going to come back into our budget for next year. So those are things to be mindful of as far as we're going forward. What's in store? Um, the gala, which is a great event, um, will not be held until September 2024. That means we will not be with that income um, over the course of the school year. And for this, that means about a, a, a loss of about 150 plus thousand dollars. So we have a fundraising committee that's meeting to uh, figure out how to offset that um, missing money so to say, um, since the gala will not be held. Our first effort is through Giving Tuesday, which is coming up at the end of this month on November 28th. We are looking to, um, we are looking at the maintenance of our facility. Um, 10 years this year, we're celebrating in our new facility and it is uh, still looking quite new, but as you know at your home, um, there are things that need to be done like painting and sprucing up things, uh, checking mechanical systems and so forth. So part of the funding that we raise on I Give Catholic Giving Tuesday will be going towards those maintenance costs. And the rest of it will be going towards tuition assistance and other operational expenses. So over the course of the rest of the year, we have a goal of raising about $150,000, which would make up for the gala that we're not having until September of next year. So I would ask for your prayerful consideration as we look towards Giving Tuesday in a couple of weeks. There is a, a link in the bulletin for that as well. We hope to um, be able to raise as much money as possible on that day and anything that we do over $150,000, we will consider an even bigger blessing and that will go into our savings accounts to help us plan for uh, future years. Um, so I just want to thank you for your time this morning. Um, thank you for my ramblings. And um, let, I just want you to know that I will be in the lobby afterwards. It's a sign. <laughs> Father, are you doing that? <laughs> I just want to thank you so much. I'll be in the lobby after uh, Mass this morning if you have further questions or you can call or stop by the school office. So I appreciate your time. Have a blessed day. Thank you, Chris. As we have heard, uh, our school is our mission, and it's out of our heart. Uh, like you have heard, 1.2 million uh, is a lot of money for only the parish to be subsidizing. So we are hoping that going in the future, 
that maybe we can cut down that by the tuition that we can get from the students. But at the same time, we want to help those students who are uh, underprivileged, who need a good education uh, from the support that comes from us. And as you have heard, some grants will be falling off, so it will be a huge burden for our parish. So we have to find ways and means. But thank you so much, like the principal said, for all the support. Let's continue to support our school and give better education to all the children. May we now stand and offer our prayers in temptation to God. For Pope Francis and the church, <clears throat> that together, inspired by the Holy Spirit, may we have wisdom and insight to reforming the church and guide her on the true path of love, fraternity, and holiness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish family, that like the wise virgins, we keep our lamps forever burning through our good works, and that the light of Jesus through us may bring support and relief to all people in need, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who thirst for God, may their minds and hearts be open to the inspiration of the word of God, the beauty of the sacraments, and the life-giving truths of our faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In thanksgiving for all veterans, we pray for peace and stability in the Holy Land, Ukraine, and all countries across the world torn apart by war and conflict, and for a blessing upon all our veterans. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the gift of understanding and wisdom, we pray for our government leaders, especially the newly elected officials, that they face issues with honesty, work for unity, justice, and peace, and for the common good. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all people who are anxious or fearful at this time, those struggling through illness, or facing surgery, the caregivers, the elderly and lonely, may they find consolation, strength, and comfort of Jesus Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And in this month of November, we pray for all those who mourn the death of a loved one. May they find healing, strength, and hope in the assurance that their loved ones are resting in the eternal light and peace of Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For what else shall we pray? As always, Lord, we pray for world peace and pray for the safety of the enemy in uniform. I also offer Lord, hear our prayer. <clears throat> we hold so deeply in our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God and Father, as you receive our prayers this morning, we thank you for reminding us of who we are and how to sustain our lives as your disciples, as your instruments of love, peace, and justice. We pray, Lord, that by your Spirit, that the light may continue shining in each one of us, that wherever we are, we may bring this light and bring all the people out of darkness. Grant all this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
offertory hymn, you'll find in the green hymnals, page 700, Jesus Christ is the Way, page 700. sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look with favor, we pray, O Lord, upon the sacrificial gifts offered here, that celebrating in mystery the passion of your Son, we may honor it with 
loving devotion through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is through right, right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself, that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit, might to the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifest as a church. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like they do fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly to his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring out the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Jacques, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us, O we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ.
Troje moan duece moan den hen, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Gracious grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who say to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter the mind, but on say the word and my soul shall.
have to continue to be the sanctuary for the Lord by keeping the lamp burning and the light shining. Let us pray. Nourished by this sacred gift, O Lord, we give you thanks and beseech your mercy that by the pouring forth of your spirit, the grace of integrity may endure in those your heavenly power has entered through Christ our Lord. Amen. May you please be seated for a moment for announcements. Good morning, church. Good morning. Two brief announcements. By the way, I'm Mary Ann Turner, and I'm with the St. Anthony Women's Council. First one, the Women's Council is having their annual bake sale next Sunday after all the masses except 5 o'clock. And we'd like for you to come in and buy stuff for Thanksgiving. We're going to have breads, pies, cakes, muffins, cookies. Children will love you. Secondly, we will also have there, for those of you who couldn't make it to Deacon Steve's book signing, we will have some of his books there for anyone who has not received one. Thank you. Hello, I'm Rita Oakbrook from Health Ministry. On your mark, get set. Go. This is it. We are starting Walk to Bethlehem, our imaginary walk of 6,420 miles. We can do this. Um, if you haven't registered, please do so outside. But everyone needs to pick up one of our booklets that has each week's meditations and instructions how to record your mileage. I'm so proud of it this year. Um, it's been written by all of us, but mostly by Deacon Steve and Bev Ellington, and I'm really proud of them. So pick up a book and get walking. Good morning. Good morning. About two months ago, a motion picture was released called The Burial, B-U-R-I-A-L, featuring Tommy Lee Jones and Jamie Foxx. It's based on a true story. It's a great movie for those who have not seen it. It's received rave reviews. But the, the, the really cool part, the, the, the most important part right now um, about this movie is that um, our very own Larry McCullough is the one who wrote the opening song for that movie. As you can tell, he does not like attention on himself. You can find it on Amazon Prime. I think we also watched it on Peacock, I believe. But there, it is available. Um, but anyway, we are just super proud of him. And um, it's just always just a, a good reminder of the talent that we have in our midst. We are super blessed to have him. So congratulations, Larry. Good morning, church. My name is Mary McNicholas, or turkey lady, but um, I will be collecting turkeys and hams for the school outside today. My car has all the trunk popped up, and hopefully we'll have some more turkeys and hams to give to the needy kids at school. Thank you so much. I'd like to wish uh, Larry and myself a happy birthday uh, Friday and Saturday this week. My name is James Boyd, and I'd like to ask my fellow veterans to stand and be recognized and thank for their service, and I want you to know exactly who they are. Please stand. All veterans. Speaking of veterans, uh, Horace Mays, you know, he's a veteran, old Navy guy. Uh, he's in the hospital right now. So Paulette and I, we stopped by yesterday, visited him at the hospital, took him a little bouquet of flowers and a little American flag on that flower. And he was really glad to see us. 
Thank you. I'll make it short. Johnny, you took my thunder away. There's two, there's two things. First, remember the 11th day, the 11th hour of the 11th month that was supposed to end all wars. We all know how that turned out. But the real reason I'm here is one, to thank all of you for your, for thanking us for what we've done. And again, I want to talk about Horace. He's been a long time member of this parish. He's a brother in arms. Please, if you have the time, stop by and see him. Mike and I are going to go up and give him some gifts from the Intrepid, which he served on. Just take a few minutes. Put a smile on his face. Maybe you'll give him a shot in the arm, and he'll be with us next Sunday. With God's will, God's help. Thank you all. Anyone else? Thank you. Thank you so much, really, to the veterans and the support of your families. We thank you so much. Uh, Christmas time is approaching. Uh, I'll encourage all of you to take the bulletin and look at the back. We have five different ways of reaching out and sharing the joy with those people cannot afford. It's Christmas time is the time of joy. There are five things that we can share in. There's a toy drive. There's a uh, Christmas boutique at school. There's adopt a child at school. Uh, there is giving tree and turkey and ham for Christmas. Uh, but the giving tree this year it will be shared between the school and the Clare home. I think some of you have heard about the Clare home where they help these young women uh, to have their babies, to bring their babies in this world instead of going through the pro-choice life. So we are going to support that home. So that giving tree will be for the school and for Clare home. So please pick up the bulletin because the dates are there, the deadlines. We want to share all the blessing with those people who are less uh, fortunate than we are. So pick up one thing, or maybe you can share in those five or two or one or three, according to the blessings that you, uh, God has bestowed upon you. So let's be joyful as we celebrate with other people who need our support. May we please stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Our closing hymn will be found in our green hymnals on page 712. Page 712. Just four square. And he declared he'd meet me there. I've never been to heaven, but I've been told. That the streets up there are paved with gold. If you get there before I do, 
tell all my friends I'm coming to you.